What is going on in Central America? There's unusual earthquake activity. And by unusual, I mean really unusual. We're talking about thousands and thousands of earthquakes. So are they basically precursors, a foreshock for something bigger? Is it tectonic plates moving towards something bigger or not? Because this is really, really so significant. And I just reported in my other video about South America, Chile, Argentina, that magnitude 7.5. Very unusual earthquake because the aftershocks were so unusual. And we know that there are the most dangerous settings in this area and that there could be something triggered like like a tectonic chain effect so is this connected or what is going on because when we look at the number of earthquakes we have to scratch our heads guys and i know you do so let's do this again together thanks for being here and you know not once but multiple times a day you have to imagine that and i'm sure the people in santorini greece and in campi Figri, they know and some people in california maybe too you know if you're waking up to the ground trembling beneath your bed and then you walk around all day and it's trembling continuously beneath your feet like not once but multiple times over the course of just a few days this is concerning and this is right now as we speak guys becoming a reality for many people across central america and that's a region region that's already on the edge due to its very volatile tectonic setting but in the past weeks, we've seen a sharp, a really, really sharp increase in earthquakes and in the higher ranges, some over magnitude five. And that's, of course, is for me, I'm raising the question, is this just business as usual, like for one of the world's most active seismic zones, or are these four shocks for something bigger? I want to take you with me, guys, really dig deep into this recent earthquake activity in Central America. And I want to explore with you what is driving it and also examine the volcanic connections to this and then find an explanation whether this pattern that we're seeing here, this sharp increase, could be a warning sign of a much larger event to come. So let's look at the facts april 2025 brought over 4200 recorded earthquakes to central america yes many were small but a notable cluster of magnitude four and above really stood out when we're looking at this earthquake swarm and the most significant in april Significant ones in April were a magnitude 5.0 near Sardinal, Guanacaste in Costa Rica. There's volcanoes as well. April 30th, magnitude 4.0 offshore of El Salvador, 157 kilometers south southwest of Puerto El Triunfo. And May 1st, magnitude 5.2 struck 82 kilometers southwest of Tonala in Chiapas in Mexico, just 10 kilometers deep, very shallow and potentially more damaging. Yes, we have to say, isolated quakes in this range are not uncommon, but a cluster like this across multiple countries in such a short period of time is unusual and especially when it's focused along the same tectonic boundary so to understand that we need to zoom out a bit little bit and look at central america's tectonic setting because unfortunately it is built to shake if we can say that central america sits along it's called the middle america trench it's also a subduction zone where the cocos plate doesn't not sound nice, but it is not that nice, is plunging beneath the Caribbean plate. And this boundary stretches from southern Mexico to Panama. And it's one of the most seismically 
and for my volcano freaks volcanically active zone on the whole planet so the key factors of this area the cocos plate moves roughly six to seven centimeters per year northeast and this movement of course you can imagine creates massive stress buildup along faults and that eventually releases as earthquakes so subduction zones i don't like them they're never good because they can create massive massive earthquakes so and this subduction zone also fuels a volcanic arc giving rise to over 70 volcanoes and over 70 active volcanoes in this region that is massive and where do these earthquakes occur these by now roughly 5,000 earthquakes in the last few weeks they occur both within the subducting slab and along crustal faults in the overriding plate some are very shallow and dangerous others are deeper but still very very powerful so is this pattern of this massive massive earthquake swarm that is happening right now a precursor because for me the big question is what are we looking at guys let me know in the comments what you think are we looking at four shocks there's a few scenarios could be normal stress release background seismicity still very unusual for that cascading stress transfer one quake triggers strain on nearby faults or precursory swarms increase in moderate quakes may signal that a larger rupture is building up so is it releasing stress is it building up stress we know from history that foreshocks always have preceded major events in this region before. In 2001, El Salvador was hit by two major earthquakes, magnitude 7.7 .7 and 6.6 .6, within only a month. And in both cases, and that's why this is so important, clusters of smaller earthquakes preceded the main shocks. The problem with the current seismic activity is also why this is similar. It shares a similar buildup, but without confirmation of stress transfer or ground deformation. So it's impossible to say with certainty that a larger quake is coming. That's, that's clear. And another risk, I would say, are the volcanoes listening to this? Does this rumbling activate some volcanoes or vice versa because the earthquakes alone aren't the only concern central america seismic zones are very tightly linked to volcanic systems the central america volcanic arc includes fuego we know that guy pacaya in guatemala santa ana and san miguel in el salvador masaya and Momo Tombo in Nicaragua, Arenal and Turialba in Costa Rica. So always subduction feeds magma into these volcanoes and earthquake swarms can signal magma movement. We also know that. If you follow my channel, you've seen what's been happening at Santorini, what's happening in Iceland and other areas. Subscribe if you haven't followed that. So magma movement, is this the reason? So there was a quake cluster in 2012 and after this quake cluster volcanic eruptions increased across multiple sites. So wow, this doesn't sound too good guys. Including there was heightened degassing and small explosive events at these volcanoes. So officially no major volcanic unrest has been linked to the recent quakes yet but that doesn't mean anything they don't know of course they're closely watching 
for elevated SO2 emissions, changes in thermal output of fumaroles around all these volcanoes, a land rise, ground uplift or inflation, is magma trying to come to the surface? Are magma chambers filling up? And what we always have to look out for, if there's seismic tremor patterns that differ from tectonic quakes, they may signal rising magma. So let's say, let's go to the theory, this is a foreshock for a bigger quake, a tectonic quake. How big could that quake get and where? So the Middle America Trench has produced earthquakes so far up to magnitude 8.2 with the last mega thrust event in the region that occurred in 1992 um, off Nicaragua with a magnitude 7.7 .7, and that has caused a devastating tsunami. So unfortunately in these regions, earthquakes, volcanoes and tsunamis. And since then, the stress has been building up for decades. So depending on where a rupture occurs along this trench, an earthquake has the potential to exceed magnitude 7. And that is definitely geologically plausible, especially in this region offshore from Guatemala or Nicaragua, where the strain accumulation is significant. So it's concerning. The world is rumbling everywhere. By the way, I just heard Austria had an earthquake and we've had several earthquakes in Germany. It's kind of crazy. So let's say this middle America trench is doing something bad. What could be the impacts and what about preparedness? So if a large quake were to strike, urban centers like San Salvador, Managua, or Guatemala City would be at severe risk from that. The infrastructure is already under a strain and some countries could fail catastrophically. Coastal zones would face the risk of tsunamis, also from shallow offshore quakes, displacements, power outages, potential volcanic crisis, all that could follow. This sounds like a doomsday scenario. So that's why it's so important that especially these countries would invest in more early warning systems, public education campaigns on earthquake preparedness, and also cross-border scientific collaboration because they're all in the same boat, especially when it comes to volcano monitoring. Of course, we can't have the golden answer to what this is. We have to wait and see and eventually find out. It could be just simply a part of the region's ongoing tectonic movements and changes, but it could also be something more. History that has happened in this area teaches us that sometimes patterns like these precede much larger events. Time to prepare is now in my opinion, for everyone that lives here, for every government that is affected. So as always, guys, wherever you live, stay informed, stay ready, keep watching the ground beneath your feet, keep watching those volcanoes that might be nearby where you live. I'm looking at a volcano multiple every day. Uh, so I hope you like this, subscribe, leave it a like, you know the drill guys. If you want to support the channel, check the links in the description of this video. There's a join button if you want to become a monthly supporting member. I have a buy me a coffee site where you can give me fuel to get running and I'm supporting my farm with this and the supers of course here on YouTube. So thanks for all that. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching, for commenting, for liking, for trying to push this channel forward. Now we have reached the 70,000 subscriber mark. So guys, subscribe. Now I want the 100,000, that silver plate. Maybe it is possible. It's only possible because of you. So thank you guys. It's amazing. I see you very soon. Bye-bye.